Okay, if you're a Christian and you have found that in your life you are actually struggling, you know the right thing to do, but you're not really doing that. You're doing other things. I want to say, I want to explain that in Galatians 5, it tells you exactly why, okay? And it gives a lot of clues about what's going on. So if you're in that place, you need to pay attention. Now listen, I need to tell every Christian that's listening to me, there's something really important to this that we all have to realize, okay? We all have to pay attention to. It's not just for people that are new believers or, or if you're a mature believer, there's still something here. So pay attention, okay? First, Galatians chapter five, the apostle Paul explains the difference between the flesh, the natural man, the desires of the natural man, and the spirit, the, the part that God gives life to when you're born again, okay? And he explains something really direct in verse 17. He says, the flesh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. He's explaining something. He's saying, look, your natural man, the natural desires and all that, they are contrary to God's spirit. I think most of us already know this. It's crystal clear. By daily experience, you know, we regularly are in this battle. We are all aware of how our flesh, which is actually one of our enemies, our flesh is trying to lead us away in all sorts of un-Christ-like things. And the spirit also is warring against the flesh. Okay, now, this opens up a whole mess of things that are important to consider and to, and to talk about. And the first thing that I want to say is this. The one area or one major area that most believers fail to understand where they're losing the battle to their flesh is right here. Okay? Because for some reason, people often don't think that they, they need to be accountable for what's going on in their brain. Okay? And the other part is in their heart. Okay? And of course, we know our heart just moves blood. Right? But you get what I'm saying. In the emotions, the mental and the emotional part of us often is actually where we lose our battle to the flesh because we allow our brain and we allow our emotions to do whatever they want. And you say, well, Dale, of course. I mean, how can I control it? You can. You can. Obviously, there are a lot to this, right? Obviously, there's a lot to be said about this. But what I'm saying is, when you think something's sad, you cry. Well, I don't, but maybe you do. You think something's terribly sad, right? Because you have trained yourself to say, you know, for example, if you hear about somebody dying that was very young, well, you've already trained yourself to say, man, people should live longer than 20 years, right? And so you have properly esteemed and valued a young life and, and you see all the potential. And then when you hear about somebody passing away at a very young age, it breaks your heart. That's correct, okay? But people cry about things all the time that they shouldn't, okay? And this is why I'm saying you can control it, okay? Listen, you watch a movie, and in the movie, they paint this whole picture about this 
a couple that gets married and they have a horrible marriage. And then one of the people in the movie goes out. They split up because they they have a horrible marriage. And that one of the people goes out, even though they're still married, and meets the person of their dreams. And, you know, uh, they fall in love and everything is beautiful. Okay. There's actually a ton of junk out there like this. Okay, well, because you're given over to this plot or whatever, and you're not thinking through the ramifications of that, the, the fact that this is literally a slap in God's face, you get caught up in that storyline and you get emotional. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. You know what all worked out? They had love or whatever. When you should have been angry. And if you sat next to me, you would find that I would be angry. I'd be sitting there just like mad dogging the screen. Like, what is this garbage that I'm watching right now? Because I hate that stuff. I hate the stuff that says the way that God set it up doesn't work. But if you do it your own way, that's going to work out. See? But if you're not paying attention and, and you're not, this is why I'm saying you can control it. What you're controlling is you're controlling a biblical view of what's happening before you. But see, your flesh is at work in your mind telling you all sorts of crazy things. It's telling you things about insecurities that you have. It's telling you things about everybody around you. It's telling you things that are mostly egotistical or based in some sort of crazy pride or, you know, um, who knows, right? Uh, egocentric things. It's your brain unsurrendered to God and his spirit is going to tell you all sorts of crazy stuff. And this is where most Christians are losing their battle, right there. It would be nice, honestly, to blame the devil for that. But I'm going to tell you, a, a lot of it is just the failure that Christians have in their lives to actually bring in God's word into their heart and into their mind. Basically, allow it to dictate their emotions. Is it going to work perfectly? No, but will it? Will God's word dictate emotions to you? Yes, it will. Because the truth of it will give you freedom. It will give you clarity of thought. And it will start to change how, how you react emotionally to things. Okay? It will cause you to love people that you di didn't even like before. It'll help you to, um, you know, value things that don't seem valuable to you. This is important because part of, I'm just telling you a big part of the trap is right there. The flesh, the overactive mind that is not brought into subjection to God's word. The thoughts are not being taken captive by truth. You're not identifying the the lies or the the filth that's still circulating in there and you think and think and think and think and think without saying wait a minute right wait a minute that's rubbish that's nonsense okay it's an important point okay it's something that i think a lot of people are completely clueless to even when you look at what's happening in the world, people often are gripped with fear. They look at it and they say like, oh no, the world is falling apart. Everything is going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's been in a state of decline for a long time and it's getting close to being declined. Okay. But regardless of all of that, we have so many truths to rely upon to get us through whatever chaos happens in the world. So 
I am just here to encourage you. I'm here to tell you to spend some time. Obviously, if you're not in the word and you're not studying the word, you need to be doing that. Or memorizing the word, meditating on the word. That's not an evil thing. You know, Eastern mystic uh, religions have stolen meditation from the Bible. They took it and they messed it up because meditation in those Eastern religions is like basically leaving yourself open to uh, spiritual suggestion of whatever sort. Normally not the, the good sort, right? It's, it's all clear your mind and your thoughts. No, biblical meditation is pondering and repondering and repondering, focusing your thought upon what God's word says and analyzing it, you know, mentally digesting it, dissecting it, you know, taking time to think and to, and to ponder. So do that. Meditate on God's word. And look, you can start it with some of the simple, some of the most simple passages out there that people quote all of the time. It's for a reason. It's because there's, there, they apply to all of these situations, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Right, that one alone, you can just take some time and think about it almost every day and have God shine light into your life. That you're like, oh, I'm doing that wrong. So take some time to think about this and to pray about it. Okay, Lord, am I losing this battle because I'm letting my thoughts go and be directed according to my flesh? because I'm not yielding to your spirit and I'm not taking these thoughts captive. And I'm, I'm look, I'm just telling you guys this because um, honestly, it's easy. It's easy thing to do, right? This battlefield that's in the spiritual world, this is the first theater of conflict. This is where it all begins right here. So I hope that ministers to you and I hope that gives you some clarity and some wisdom on what to do next. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you so much for watching this 12, almost 13 minutes long. If you're still watching it, I appreciate that so much. May the Lord richly bless you. Please leave me a comment if it ministered to you. Also like and subscribe, and I will see you again tomorrow. God bless.